Welcome back to another episode of the Jacksonville Buzz's Buzzworthy Business. I'm Steve Strum. This morning, I actually have a very good friend of mine that I've known for entirely too long, Mr. Jimmy James Peluso, City Councilman of Jacksonville. Hey, my man, for having me. good to see you. I, you know, it has been good. too long. It's you know, good I, to see I, you're you. running for politics. You yeah. know, you're going to be the you know the president one day. You know, doing all the things. Uh, one uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Jimmy Peluso is Councilman here, City of Jacksonville, Naval Officer. So yeah. obviously, thank you for that, sir. Service, but today we're not talking about that part. Okay. We're talking about a different kind of service. All right. That service in the city of Jacksonville, Northeast Florida. Yes. And I think we got three big things. Let's talk about them. Downtown. Yep. Stadium. Yep. Why that's not just a fun place to go, but very important. And then some recent legislation that you have introduced acknowledging uh, certain issues with economic development. Yes. I think that's kind of where uh, we're at. Certainly. So let's, let's start it off. Talk to me about downtown. So I think we're at a really critical time in Jacksonville's history, right? Um, our current mayor, Don Deegan, has really said we've got to make sure our downtown's properly growing. She's been to Tampa. She's been to Orlando. She's been to St. Pete. And she's talked to those mayors and about what we're going to see and what we're going to do. And, and she's recognized, hey, look, proper infrastructure and proper public places uh, is what really kind of drives growth. Um, and, and, you know, right now we're seeing work being done on Riverfront Plaza, which is where the old landing was. That's going to be sure. a massive new park that's going to be a space open and available to all. Um, but besides that, I think a lot of people want to see cranes. They want to see cranes in the air. I know that I want to. I've been waiting for years to finally see Jacksonville get to the place it needs to. And I think with the help of the Downtown Investment Authority, um, the mayor is working on getting a great project on Pearl Street, um, you know, taken care of. That's up in the North Core, mm -hmm. and it's being done by a group called the Gateway Project, so um, or, or Gateway Jacks. And so they're going to be doing six new buildings. Um, I think three of them are, are existing, like garages and stuff like that, and they're going to build them up. And then two new high-rises that they're building. Uh, and they're going to start work hopefully by the end of this year. But we're going to see real cranes in the air doing impressive work in the city of Jacksonville. With bigger, taller going vertical and having that I always had that urban density if you think about like you, uh, density. you think about Fort Lauderdale yep. right if you th if you look at Fort Lauderdale and I came up here from the Miami Fort Lauderdale area 20 years ago uh, it's been that long and you look at the skyline and you could see clearly see the cluster yep. but when you look at Jacksonville now some of it's the river right yep. it bisects so there's a little bit of stretching um, but I, I've heard a lot of you guys talking about that 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 revitalization of that core, but having that density. Yep. What is density and why do we want to have this density? So, you know, if you ever read the Jackson Magazine, which I do uh, pretty religiously, there's some really smart architects and urban planners that are in there. They talk about the three C's and it's basically about clustering all of your stuff and making sure that there's activity at all times, right? Some people get really uh, anxious about going downtown and, and frankly, I don't always blame them. Sure. Because when you go from one portion of downtown, like one bar or establishment to the other, you might be walking by two or three blocks where there's no activity whatsoever. And it just feels like it's dead, whether or not it is or it isn't. Not to mention our downtown is quite large. It goes all the way from, uh, you know, the Fuller Warren, so you got 95, you go all the way to the stadium, right? That's considered our downtown boundary. So it's massive that in is. scale. That's so, big from a geographic perspective. Yeah. That's like a uh, Milwaukee size. It's big, I mean, oh, yeah. footprint wise. Yep. But now one of the other pieces you just mentioned the stadium is the bookend. Yes. And they did a lot of work on the road right there. Yep. And we brought in daily. So yep. I know there's a and lot the four seasons. that it's on its way. Yep. Yeah. They broke ground, I think. I think I saw the. No, they've, they've done all the major work. Uh, they're now going vertical. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So amazing. They, they got cranes up in the air right now. So the cranes you want absolutely. are the cranes you see. Yeah, Just need more of those. Exactly right. I want more of them. But a lot of people talk about the stadium and yep. like, oh, you know, what's the big deal? Why are we spending, you know, potentially spending multiple billions of dollars on a stadium renovation? But as that bookend on one side of downtown yeah. and as a major economic driver, that's something the city takes very seriously. I know city council's taking it very seriously. The mayor's taking it very seriously. Yep. Everybody's taking it very seriously. The Jaguars are taking it very seriously. Mm -hmm. Why is a stadium reno so important? And then, of course, the follow-up behind that is, why is the NFL in Jacksonville so important? Well, first off, right, we have to do a stadium renovation because the NFL won't allow us to remain here without a renovation. Well, there, so, there, so yeah. whether or not, I mean, we, we could we got tons of arguments about, oh, it's what the Jaguars want, it's what Shad Khan wants. No, it's what the NFL requires. Really? So there's, yeah. So there's, and unfortunately, it's happening 
I mean, the, the worst part about the NFL is they really kind of have like this monopoly, and they're able to kind of really dictate to their teams, especially the small market teams like ours. Sure. So what I will give the Jaguars a ton of credit for, and Mark Lamping is the president of the Jaguars, they've really done a good job of kind of going to the council members, going to the administration, and starting this negotiation very, very early. Um, and they talked about what, what can be done and what can't be done. Um, there, there does need to be a considerable amount of money coming from our side, the public sector side, to help pay for the stadium. Now, where those monies come from is really what I'm, I care about most, whether it be you know seat licensing or ticket sales. You know That way, it's not just the taxpayer of the city of Jacksonville. It's people who are coming in from out of town. right? We have away games. We have people from New England. We've got people from New York, people from Buffalo. Uh, or we have folks even in the region. We have people from Nassau, Clay, St. John's, other parts of the, of the area. They're coming in, and they're paying money. So let's make sure that we capture some of those to help pay our side of it. So a lot of people are talking about, oh, let's do a referendum. We should do a referendum. Um, now, for everybody here, what's yeah. a referendum? Yeah, basically, it goes on the ballot, and it says, do you want to do you want to pay X amount of money for the Jaguar Stadium? There's no nuance in that question, and there's no actual ties to, okay, well, the money can come from this, money can come from that, money can come from here. So again, there's, there's different ways that we could help pay for this. And, and there's bed taxes, for instance, like those will definitely be going to this. Those aren't taxes that we could spend on anything other than tourism um, and stadium improvements. So like there's, there's a lot to go on there. And for me, it's in my district. And two, the east side, which is the neighborhood that's adjacent to the property, um, the Jaguars have been really kind to them and really great to them. And they're right now writing up a community benefits agreement that will help support the east side and their development as they move forward. Because there's no neighborhood that's going to be more impacted over the next 30 years, because that's probably what the lease is going to be, than the east side. So we want to make sure that they're prepared for having this brand new stadium. And what is, what's also going to happen is they're going to build out throughout the stadium area to create a new stadium district, an entertainment district. We haven't really talked about that a ton. It's actually what I care almost more about, because you know the stadium's going to be great. We'll have 50 to 80 events a year. Um, but, you know, I, I want people there at all times. Yeah, it'd be, from what I've read, it's almost like going to have a, a, a Nashville-ish vibe going on. Maybe not exactly, because every, <laughs> every city's unique, but yep. it's going to definitely be, it's a bookend of downtown. And it's not just about what you and I are doing on a Sunday yep. and the cost of what a beer would be at the stadium. It, 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 of course, it is that, because I like going to watch a football game. But it's not just about the football game. Mm -hmm. It's about international business presence. Yep. We have now a gateway by which we go once or twice a year to Europe. People know where Jacksonville is. They do. So it's not just about the Jaguars, what Shad Khan wants, what's the record, are we going to make the playoffs? It's an economic driver. By the way, force. all very valid. Points. Oh, they are very I valid. I mean, like, you we, know, we should be going to the damn playoffs. Oh, we should be winning the AFC. Yeah, if not on a contention, I mean, we happen to have a six foot six, very fine haired gentleman that can throw that ball about 800 miles an hour, sure. you know, threading a needle at 40 yards away. Uh, and, and, you know, but it's not just about the football game. It's a, it is a football game, and, and I support my Jaguars, right? It, it's uh, a mixed use development. But right? it is. You got housing. You got concerts. Housing. You've got restaurants. Yeah. You've got bars, which yep. gives them more taxes, which means more revenue. People know Jacksonville grows, which means that the you know we are kind of poised to. I think what you said. There's how many megalopoli megalopolises in Florida left? You've got Miami. Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, which is basically becoming one contiguous city. Yeah. You've got the Tampa, St. Pete area over there. Of course, Orlando's Orlando. And yep. you've got the Daytonas of the world, Tallahassee's of the world. But Jacksonville really is poised, and they have been for a long time. And I think they're starting to figure out that economic engine because we're that last spot. Great weather, no hurricanes. Yep. Uh, this deep water-ish port yep. that we're working on. I mean, we, we do. So, you know, you're right. The maritime industry is huge here. Our port, Jack's Port, I think is the largest container shipping port in Florida. Wow. So it's huge. Like we really have the economic vitality to kind of withstand a lot of a lot of headwinds that other places can't. Orlando can't handle another epidemic or another financial issue. Uh, if there's a financial collapse, boom, Disney and Universal and all those sure. really suffer in that hard. Yeah, we have that diversification here. We I mean, do. There, you know, land, sea, Medical, air, yep. finance, yep. all of it. Yep. So all that to say, right? I mean. You build up the area outside the stadium and all throughout our downtown. Because one of the things that many critics say, and, and I'm among them, we really also need to care more about our urban core beyond any other places. That's what the Laurel Street Trio is, of which I have many opinions that I could talk about any day of the week. Um, but you've got a lot of old buildings right there that we could be working on. But if you get the, the stadium area up and running, and you kind of get that urban core up and running, 
I mean, now you've got so much, so many new residents that are living in our downtown, and we're going to make sure those are affordable homes, right? I made that commitment to, uh, I spoke with the Jaguars about that a while back. I said, if you're going to build any th anything in housing-wise, 20% of it better be affordable housing. And they said, well, we'll, we'll be doing affordable Well, housing. and which is interesting is we kind of take this uh, segment, uh, and I can talk to you all day about this. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, you and I, you know, it's great. I, I really appreciate taking the time because I know your schedule is just that demanding. Yep. The affordable housing thing, let's also kind of dovetail that to the recent legislation where you have acknowledged formally yep. redlining. Now, for all the folks that don't know what a redlining is, what is a redlining? So, what is a red line? Well, here's the thing. Back in the 1930s, um, obviously, we're in the middle of the Great Depression. We had the, no, the New Deal. And so we had a lot of loans and a lot of mortgages that, were, uh, th that went by the wayside, and a lot of people went in default. So the federal government said, we'll start backing all of those loans and mortgages. Uh, and they said, hey, creditors, hey, banks, uh, savings and loans, whatever else, um, we're going to give you documents based on the municipalities that you're all operating in. We're going to say which areas we think you should put you know, give mortgages to in which areas we shouldn't. So, you know, we have a document from 1938 that shows Jacksonville um, separated based on color about where they would recommend and kind of require, like, hey, if you're gonna get a, if you're gonna get a mortgage here, we'll back it. If you get a mortgage there, we won't back it. And so these red line areas are places where they did not back mortgages and they told banks not to invest there. They're, they were all based on race, right? So you look in the documentation, it would say this neighborhood is 100% African American. They didn't use that terminology. Um, right. So back in those days, yeah. I think it was a little more, uh, I guess, socially yeah. unacceptable language. But it, certainly it was. So like the East Side, La Villa, Brooklyn, um, North Riverside, Durkeeville, like it's all redlined out. And they basically they're saying, uh, don't invest in these prop in these areas and these in these families. And so at a time where uh, it was so critical to to own your home, because obviously the best way to guarantee intergenerational uh, wealth is to own property in a home. Um, they would not allow for basically black and brown people to get that same right. And then dovetail that with the end of World War II, you have um, GI Bill benefits that were administered by the states. So if you went to go apply to go to college and you wanted to use um, a VA loan, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, GI Bill, um, you know, many of them were denied just based on their race, especially if they were in southern states that still had Jim Crow laws. And if you wanted to go and buy a home and get a VA loan, again, they were administered by the states. They could say no. So, I mean, it, it, we saw multiple iterations of what redlining and racial discrimination could do. And all of those neighborhoods that were redlined are still the neighborhoods today that are considered, you know, kind of in a distressed area. And we have Health Zone 1 and Health Zone 2, uh, which are basically a, a lot of areas where health disparities are massive and unemployment is massive. It's all those same areas. I mean, the links are there. What we did back in the 1930s as a government has affected people today, and it's up to us to try to fix it. You know, it is interesting. That was uh, 100 years ago, but at yeah. the same time, it was only 100 years ago, where literally based off of skin color, we may have to use different bathrooms. Yeah. You know, and it's great that what you're trying to do. So, you know, I, uh, I'm going to have you on an, back on another segment, talk about what you're doing professionally, also in your service uh, to our great city. But, you know, thank you for taking the time talking about the things you're doing to help our great city. You know, I'm not going to ask you what's next on re-election time, but, uh, you know, if uh, President Peluso, you know, that's a great tagline. You know, can I get like a vote for Pedro shirt, but, you know, vote for Jimmy? I, th I think we got a long ways away. A little before, long ways away on that one. Any right. of that. So before President Peluso, we're yeah. going to be with Councilman Peluso. And, sir, thank you so much. For everything you do for the city, uh, everything you do for our country, and you know, most importantly, being my friend, and I look forward to watching your career just take off. Thank you, man. I appreciate Good it. Thanks for you. having me. Thanks again for joining us on the Jacksonville Buzz. If you like us, share us, and remember, live with gratitude.